Heels Podcast, episode 167. So anxiety, for instance, isn't even a feeling. Anxiety is like a state of our body that is letting us know that there's a feeling that wants to come out. It's like a body sensation. What's under anxiety is really like worry or fear, but it's an energy that wants to be expressed. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Hills Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben and Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately. Welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining us. I'm Allison Melody. And I'm Susie Hardy. Today's guest is JJ Flazanes. JJ has been on our show before talking about so many amazing things like the law of attraction and how to exercise properly to achieve true weight loss. And today she's here to talk about the biggest invisible factors for releasing weight and changing addictive behavior. It's all inspired by her brand new book, The Invisible Fitness Formula, Five Secrets to Release Weight and End Body Shame. And Susie, we got to go to her book release party. We did. It was so much fun. It was great. Yeah. like Down in Venice. Down in Venice in a great little store. And um, I actually had a gift card. And so I got to get some of the books at a, at a discount with my discount card. So it was fun. JJ is also an Amazon best-selling author of Fit to Love, How to Get Physically, Emotionally, and Spiritually Fit to Attract the Love of Your Life, and author of Knack Absolute Abs, Routines for a Fit and Firm Core, and was named Best Personal Trainer in Los Angeles for 2007 by Elite Traveler Magazine. And of course, she's a fellow podcast host just like us. And before we get to today's interview, we have a special announcement. If you feel like you've tried everything and you still aren't losing weight, JJ has created something just for you. Imagine discovering a proven formula for total wellness so you can finally release the weight and experience true happiness and deep fulfillment without starving or depriving yourself or working out seven days a week. The Invisible Fitness Academy is a five-month course with weekly trainings for total body transformation. It's also an online community, a safe, judgment-free space where you get the support and accountability you need to elevate and challenge yourself into a new way of being to further your true growth. In the Academy, you will learn how to feel at home in your body, which brings you more peace, happiness, energy, and vitality. How to understand and uncover the truth about what's been sabotaging your body-changing efforts. Trigger foods to avoid. Those that trigger inflammation create water weight and those that your body has trouble digesting. Foods that support your energy and taste good so you improve your health without feeling deprived. Why you might be wasting your time with your exercise program and the one thing it must include if you want to finally see results. Strategies that increase your metabolism and allow you to burn more calories at rest. How to slow down the aging process naturally. Always can't wait to learn. I can't. (laughs) Sorry. I can't wait to learn that one. And so much more. Because JJ has limited coaching time, this offer is available to 10 members only of Food Heals Nation. Get all the details and see the additional bonuses we're offering you at foodhealsnation.com slash JJ. Next up, our interview with JJ. The Food Heals Podcast starts now. If you've struggled with finding a deeper, healthier, and happier connection to your body, food, and lifestyle, the Invisible Fitness Formula might be the answer. Recent research in mind-body medicine indicates that if we are truly going to heal the obesity epidemic that has tripled in the past 50 years, a holistic, mindful approach is key. That's why we love JJ's new book, The Invisible Fitness Formula, Five Secrets to Release Weight and End Body Shame. Welcome, JJ. Thanks, ladies. I love being here. You're so fun. We're so glad to have you back. Welcome back. Thanks. It's good to be back. It's good to have these conversations. And so since we saw you last, you have written a brand new book. I have. This is my third, The Invisible Fitness Formula, Five Secrets to Release Weight and End Body Shame. And you know, this is really more of a cultivation of everything I've done literally since I've started my business. It was a long time coming. It's been incubating for years. It's been expanding. You know, when I started Invisible Fitness, I don't know if I've talked about this before on the show. It started out as a brand for my joints. Mm. It was the question of, you know, as anyone brands themselves, it's why, how are you different? What's What makes you stand out? And back then it was the fact that I, at, in my early 20s, was talking about biomechanics and joint integrity. And that while... Someone could work you out and get you results on the outside. 
I can do the same exact thing and also preserve your joints. Because one way of doing, let's say, walking lunges. Walking lunges could increase your quad strength and you could get, you could burn some fat, you could build some muscle, you can burn some calories. But you're going to wreck your knees in a mm, walking mm-hmm. lunge. Sorry, it's just going to happen. Um, but in a stationary lunge, your knees, are, you can you can manipulate how your body moves in gravity and how you contract your muscles. So that way you're actually preserving your joints. So that was really the difference. So Invisible Fitness started out as joints. Of course, nobody cared because it wasn't about weight loss. And, um, and you know, if you it wasn't about fat burning secrets. Exactly. It wasn't about fat burning secrets or belly fat or how to get, you know, lose five pounds in a week. So mm-hmm. it was a, it was a harder sell, but it was something I was passionate about. And I still am today. So over the years, it's morphed uh, Invisible Fitness. It has included everything, literally, that is invisible. Uh, from our physiology to our digestion and aliens. to our <laughs> <laughs> are aliens invisible? <laughs> Sometimes we don't really fairies know. Fairies? All right, I'll go to fairies. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Please continue. I mean, spirit, spirit, spirit. is in spirits. So angels, a- aliens, however you want to put spirit, that is definitely the the widest expansion of this invisible brand. But yeah, everything from uh, your biology and, and always your biomechanics, your joints, your bones, your physiology, your neurotransmitters, your hormones, your endocrine system, your nervous system, your uh, your thoughts, your feelings, how you process that, your so all of that, everything literally is under Invisible Fitness now because it's all invisible. <laughs> you can't see any of it. It really is. It's like you can't see that with your six pack abs or your fat belly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. So I, so it's just it's been yeah it's been a long time coming because I. As someone of depth and great curiosity uh, and not surface oriented meaning, yes, of course, you can look at it on the outside, but how many, like I think I've said this before multiple times, how many really attractive, really buff or really thin or really lean looking people do you know are beautiful people who are freaking miserable or addicts or, mm-hmm. right, like one does not equal the other. So it's like, what is this really about? Why do you want to get fit? Why do you want to look good? Why do you care so much? Is it an addiction that you care so much? Is that part of the problem? Is it that your external beauty and who you are and who you want people to think of you as is really reliant on something that's very changing over time? So anyway, so this book really connects the body shame piece that I could not articulate early on in my life. And it has been something that doesn't matter what shape or size you are. Most people deal with some form of body shame. Absolutely. And that's what I love about your book and why I think it's different and better from the other quote unquote fitness books I've read, because it really addresses the emotional causes of some of the things that we're dealing with and also addiction. And you say in your book that addiction isn't just about drugs and alcohol, which we typically like associate it with. So can you give us like some examples of what we as thinking we're normal, you know, normal human beings might be addicted to? I would say, I believe, or I know, I'd I'd really love to find someone who's not, but like we're all addicted to something Mm -hmm. because all addiction is, is a movement away from feeling something and our soul's expression and our expansion. So anxiety, for instance, isn't even a feeling. Anxiety is like a state of our body that is letting us know that there's a feeling that wants to come out. It's like a body sensation. It's not even a feeling. Mm -hmm. What's under anxiety is really like worry or or fear, but it's an energy that wants to be expressed. And so we keep it down. And we often, when something hard happens or we interpret something or we have a trigger and we have an emotion and it's uncomfortable, there, you know, there's uh, different signs, there's different ways we were raised, there's different models that we have for emotion. But I'm going to say, generally speaking, emotion is something that we haven't studied. We haven't studied how to process it. We haven't studied how to accept it and understand it, both in our body and in the scheme of our lives. So... Well, how do you how do you do that? How do you study emotion? I mean, it's I mean, I've heard that scientists say, oh, ener- it's energy in motion, right? Emotion, but how do you do it? I mean, it's a feeling and it's fleeting and it moves and it and it is energy, so right? The, so and I, it's different energy states, absolutely. And but there's an anatomy of emotion that I go over in the book, which is that uh, that feelings don't just happen. You don't just have a feeling. There's a first. There is a thought that happens first. And then from that thought or observation, so maybe you're just, you're looking at something from that, and it can be in a split second. There's an interpretation of that, mm-hmm. and depending on what it means to you, is what's going to determine how you feel about it. Mm-hmm. Because people looking at the same thing have different responses to that thing. Sure. And there's no right or wrong way. There's just that I had a thought. That thought became an interpretation, and now because of its relationship to me somehow, mm-hmm. whether it be my past or my future or my security or stability or safety, I'm going to have a reaction to that. And that's when the emotion comes up. But a lot of people just hone on the emotion and think there's something wrong. I have this feeling. Well, the feeling didn't just appear out of nowhere. So, so this is why I eat Ben and Jerry's when I'm sad. 
Yeah, so that's food addiction. Emotional eating is like one of the biggest addictions there is because it's horrible in the way that because we have to eat. So we don't really look at, oh, I'm going to eat this thing, therefore I'm addicted, right? You know if you're smoking or if you're having too much to drink or if you're having some kind of substance abuse or substance at all, that that is possibly that there may be an addiction there. But we never really look at food or at someone or at ourselves and think, oh my God, I'm eating this thing. Does that mean I'm an addict? Right. Right. But it really can, food, that's again, what comes down to like the body shame piece and about releasing weight is identifying what is the addiction that we have and how many, because some people have many. There are people that don't want to deal with anything that they're f- thinking or feeling. So sure. they do everything from eat late at night and snack while they're watching television to doing, to being constantly bombarded with stimulus from devices multiple devices at the same time i mean i've been like guilty social media that's addiction. you like that's how i have Allison. my computer and, and your phone my phone right here and your book and i'm just like i need stimulation at, call, at all times but you're, you manage it well <laughs> i do i'm actually good at pretending i'm not addicted but go on <laughs> well i've been guilty of not being interested in what's on television and looking at my ipad while my husband's looking at his device while we're both sitting in front of the television right. not paying attention to television right but there's there's a and, and all these behaviors aren't necessarily all addictions it's the usage of them it's the imbalance well of it's them. also our our the way we're set up like there's a reason that social media took off there's a reason that we like to click like 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 it, 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 i've even read and it, we want to see like like right like. and we ta- <laughs> it's it's tapping into that kind of gambling behavior of like i'm getting i'm getting a hit i'm getting it there you're getting something biochemically every time you hit like or every time you get a like or every time you post a pic well, there's something going on there that it's beyond our consciousness well, they compare right. it to like sugar addiction where it gives you that high temporarily. And so you're constantly going back to get that high. Right. Social media speaking. Yeah. The next biggest addiction besides food addiction that's a non... See, there are hard addictions and soft addictions. Hard mm-hmm. addictions are the alcohol, the, the drugs, the tobacco, and, and sugar actually, and food can be a hard addiction because of how it's wired in your brain and the, the biochemical response of the sugar. I mean, sugar's been said to be the same as cocaine in terms mm-hmm. of its effect on the brain. But then we have our soft addictions, the things that we... I've snorted sugar. It's not the same. (laughs) (laughs) Does it hurt? Does it burn? Yes. Okay. (laughs) I haven't ever done that. Um, Yeah. Things up my nose don't really... Oh, me either. Mm. No way. Mm -mm. I'm kidding. (laughs) No, we had someone on the podcast that had snorted like maca or cacao before or something. And that was a way that like holistic, healthy people were getting high. I've never tried it. I'm just saying. Apparently it's a thing. It's a thing. Yeah. Learn something new every time I I'm know. here. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> well, cool. I, that, that came a little later than the publishing. Maybe I could have added that in. Uh, but no, our soft addictions are things like control, mm-hmm. our need for control. Oh, that's me. Our need for certainty, mm-hmm. this illusion of certainty. And the need to be right is an addiction. People pleasing. People pleasing. I have been recently with friends and with family and with clients, kind of giving them the, the talking to about the people pleasing. Because see, pe- see, people pleasing is extra dangerous because you tell yourself, but I just want people to like me. Mm-hmm. I'm just doing nice things so that they like me. No, you're, you're manipulating them. You're trying to manipulate them into a response. They think something about you so that you feel comfortable knowing that they think this thing about you and you've done a good job convincing them that this is how you are. Yet it's, it's such an illusion. You can't, you don't know what they're going to think about you tomorrow. They don't know what you're saying behind your back. Like people pleasing is one of the biggest manipulations. Like you're duping people. This actually reminds me of, do you guys remember the Friends episode where um, Phoebe and Joey were in a fight and saying like there is no good deed. There's no true good deed because every time there would be a good deed done, the person that did the good deed felt good. Felt good. And so therefore it was no unselfish good deed. So therefore every good deed was actually selfish. And I actually, it's a Friends episode, like whatever. But like I actually, that was like, traumatic for me because I was like I think when I do good things I'm helping others but I'm actually just helping my ego right and so that sounds similar to what you're talking about right now like people pleasing is like I am trying to help someone or do something so that they see me in a certain light but truly my motivation might be to make me feel better well I think they're both I mean yes you could be a nice person and want people to like you but you have to realize you have no control over that there's an there's an inauthenticity about approaching it like well, i'm gonna do this so you like me but this really goes yeah. deeper like you'd have to be a buddhist where you give up all attachment and even then like buddhists don't do nice things for other people because they're really just like trying to live in their present moment and 
you know, it goes deeper. Like we're a so, we're social creatures. We grew up in cl- we were we evolved in clans where just like wolves, you know, there is a social construct where when we help each other, we survive. If we were go to, to go off on our own and be solitary, like we are now, we wouldn't have made it in nature. Right. So it's kind of a catch twenty two. I agree with you. I to- I totally know the manipulators that are like, oh, I think I'm doing it, but they're really feeding their own ego. Yeah. Well, their own fear. They're on fear because they don't accept They're looking themselves. for approval. Look, right, right. They're That's, looking for outside validation instead of just going, I'm cool the way I am. I love myself. I mean, I know I know plenty of people that like will go beyond it co- kind of a go into a codependency where they'll go, they'll do something that goes out of their way or maybe makes them uncomfortable or puts them out to make someone, I've even done this, to make, to make someone else happy or comfortable or pleased. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, actually, I'll admit this. I used to do that and then think that that person should do the same for me. And then oh, when they didn't, yeah. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> they don't love me. And I'm like, oh, no, I really, I didn't have to do that. I could have said no, or it's not convenient, or no. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I think there's more to it than that. Like, there's a social construct of where it's kind of wired into us, right, to kind of help out. And I don't know. I feel like we're living in very unusual times in terms of our evolution as a species. Well, we're called to be more conscious. We don't, we're not focused on survival like our grandparents mm-hmm. or great grandparents were, which mm-hmm. is why I think there's more suicides today. Mm. Um, because, especially with men, because we have these assumptions that if you have money or if you have fame or if people like you, that, they're, they're, yeah, that you should be happy. And if someone says they have a demon, that that means there's something chemically wrong with them. We're too quick to want to say someone's bipolar. There's something mentally wrong with their with their head. In fact, I even have a therapist that I've worked with who specializes in testing for ADD, and she has said ADD is bullshit. She has a center for ADD, and she will say ADD is bullshit. Wait a minute. Well, why I, does she still have the center? Because it's the brain activity. She's still yeah. she's not. She's just saying that diagnosis as if it's something's wrong with you. Right. Mm, is yeah. is mm-hmm. what's bullshit. Mm-hmm. Not that it doesn't exist. Right. Yeah. It exists because a let's talk about the speed of information that's around yeah. us, and we aren't computers. So we are trying to catch up with, like, we are not hormonally equipped, endocrinely equipped to be at the speed and the pace. We are out of our bodies. We are in our heads. We're so overstimulated. And then you put on that that someone doesn't know how to be grounded. Someone doesn't know how to focus. That there's too many things going on all the time that we're looking for approval because we don't know how to get it from ourselves. And then we don't know how, we have no vocabulary for feelings and emotions and problems and contrasts and how to get those things solved. We have none. And JJ, well, we have some, but people aren't using it. And you would probably agree with this, but years ago, I interviewed Carrie Kasem, the daughter of Casey Kasem, and this is before the podcast and everything like that. I think we actually played her episode on the podcast, but I interviewed her for something else. And she literally said exactly what you just said. She said, ADD is bullshit. And the reason that she could speak to that and say that with complete you know, confidence is because... She was diagnosed with it as a child. She was given pills. The pills made her way crazy, unhappy, so out of balance. So she gave the pills back and she said, I'm going to deal with this myself. Well, it turns out that she had food allergies. And so by diagnosing her food allergies and taking things out of her diet, which I don't remember exactly what they are. I think they were dairy, gluten, maybe sugar. I don't remember. Um, The ADD symptoms completely went away. So it's just like you're saying. ADD is a condition that may be caused by these outside factors like the stimulants, whether it's the social media and the things being thrown at us in combination with the foods that or whatever we're putting in our body, GMOs, who knows, that is causing this response. But it's not a disease that we're born with that needs pills to be taken for the rest of our lives. And the fact that children are being medicated at an astronomical rate with ADD medication is absolutely disgusting. Yeah, oh, absolutely. I'm glad you brought that up about the food sensitivities. You know, it's also astrological. I remember having a friend who had a son and the son, she was all concerned. and It was more a reflection of what was going on with her because as a parent, he wasn't talking. And I was with the child and I said, I think he doesn't want it. First of all, you you give him everything. He, he goes, oh, and you give him something. He points to it. You give it to him. He has no reason to talk because you, <laughs> you enable him just like immediately he wants something and you hand him whatever he's looking at. So he doesn't have a need to talk. I said, and I don't think he, like she was concerned. He had learned she all of her fears about her as a parent were projected onto him when he was fine, but because 
He just took longer to develop he speech? Did, he, yeah, well, he's a boy. And boys do develop a little bit slower than girls when it comes to speech. Oh, Think uh-huh. about men and women. Women are chatty. Men are chatty. <laughs> That's true. If there was a guy right here, he'd be sitting here like, oh, my God, slow down, ladies. Right. I can't it, keep up. Exactly. My <laughs> husband, heads, his head spins all the time, you know? And I've had someone say, you know, maybe you want to, like, shorten. Bring it down. Short, right. Shorten the words. Make them more succinct for him. Um, not because he's not intelligent, but because it's too overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Um, so... So in terms of ADD and or ADHD, we're too quick because we just want to medicate everything, but we're we're missing um, several components, and one of them definitely is food. And I even have a show we did on the Fit to Love podcast about uh, the top five worst food preservatives and additives, mm-hmm. and all the dyes, all the dyes create the same kind of brain activity where yeah. kids can't go to sleep at night because they're overstimulated. Yellow You're, number five, and all of those things. Yep, yeah, yellow, completely... blue, yellow, blue, and red. <laughs> yeah. Red, blue, yes. Thank you for I mean, saying that. All of them, but yellow, blue, and red. <laughs> um, we have too much high fructose corn syrup in our in our diets, and is as preservatives and additives. And then you have to look at also electromagnetic frequency. We're going to bed with batteries. You have your iPad and your phone and your television. That is overstimulating your brain. So of course you can't focus or go to sleep because you're overstimulated. Yeah. So again, th- like there's basic fixes to some of the stuff that people just don't want to take the time to understand or learn. And you get caught up in the wave of what's happening now. And you just think, oh, well, that must be a problem. Well, it's bucking current trends, right? Like I have friends that use Fitbits. I will not put that goddamn thing on my body. No, I'm sorry. I can monitor my own fitness. I get it. Like I have friends that really, I was out with one the other night. She's like, I didn't get my steps today. And she started swinging her arms to try to get in her steps because she's going to get fireworks or a cupcake (laughs) when she reached 10,000 steps. And I was like, A, you're cheating. B, who the hell cares? Like you didn't make it today. You'll make it up tomorrow. Who cares? But but I know that those EMFs emitting from that um, are affecting my body. Well, I don't put a cell phone or a computer or we don't have a TV in our room at night. We are completely unplugged. And I think that's super important. But at the same time, if I log into my Wi-Fi, there's like 20 other Wi-Fis near me. Are those affecting me while I sleep? Probably. What are those doing to my body? Yeah. I don't know. I yeah. don't know yet. Cell damage. So electromagnetic frequency is cell damage, basically. Um, so people get sicker when they're around more. You, I don't know if you've ever had the experience of having a device on you and then maybe getting a headache mm-hmm. or having burning sensation in your body, whether it be like you start to lose feeling in your hand or wherever it's sitting. Okay. So yes, we are, we're killing cells basically with, I did you had your phone get really hot next to your ear. Yeah. You're messing. Yourself yes, up. I know yep. that's happened yep. to me. And I'm like, so I have like an extension phone. It's like a little pop phone. So it'll extend and plug into my phone so I can feel better about it. But I don't use it every time. Not when I'm like out somewhere. I use it at my home and my house. But when I'm out somewhere, I'm just on the phone talking. That's why I'm like, oh, I'm totally a millennial. I'm like, don't call me, text me. Don't, I don't want to pick up the phone. <laughs> so but that's my excuse. I'm like, EMFs, baby. <laughs> well, that's why I have this. This is my excuse. I'm like, no, I don't want, I use my, my iPad. But I'm, I have what a- What is that? Flip phone. Th- this is a flip phone. Got it. Old flip school. Phone. Old school. Don't so you have can it. still buy them. You can. Yeah, yeah. This is oh, like two sure. years, two years old. So you use that and your iPad mm-hmm. to get what you need to get done. Yeah. Got it. Um. Because I don't want, I mean, I, I will use this sometimes. It's off. And, but, you know, that's why. I, and unfortunately, because I really, really love Tesla, but I'll never buy an electric car for that reason. I'm not sitting on a big battery. Um, it, it, it killed me. We did a show with Dr. Elizabeth Plord. She's got uh, magnetic therapy bracelets and things to help you stave off what the, the negative effects of all the oh, things man. around I you. I didn't even think about that. I didn't either. I'm like freaking out right now. Go on. So, yeah, so anyway, Fit to Love podcast show has uh, about cell phone hazards. And I listened to one of your shows about a year ago, and I remember it freaking me the F out. <laughs> yeah. So so for that reason, I, you know, there's there's something to be said about earthing and going. That's why that's why you feel so centered in your body and calm when you go to the beach or go on go yeah. like camping or something. It's not it's not just because you're on vacation. It's because you're in touch with the earth and the earth Nature. will neutralize. Right. So the the, the negative the energies from the earth will neutralize some of those negative, negative effects ions. in yeah. your body. Yeah. Right. And that's one of the, so it's, it's resetting. I mean, there are earthing products. You can buy earthing mats for your de- at your desk, that you can literally be earthing while you're working. You can buy stuff for your bed. So there's a ton of, you know, things that can help us get those effects normally but really the best is to live a balanced life right <laughs> which and, is hard uh, it is hard but it does you know in honest, our modern society it's hard <laughs> it it can be hard I think what happens is people manifest some big bad thing you manifest cancer or you manifest something happening that forces you to go do to am I happy in my life 
or am I going to go live off the grid and sell t-shirts somewhere under a tiki hut in uh, in Tahiti or in that Hawaii? Sounds wonderful. <laughs> Right. But we, it's like we, we follow the rat race until we don't do it anymore. And then we question, are we happy or we don't? And we just think we're depressed and we take medication and we overeat foods that keep us depressed. And but there there are solutions to this. So, you know, wrap this back into the addiction conversation is the and the emotional conversation is that mo- emotions are really misunderstood. I think people just think emotions just happen. And if you understood the process, first of all, it is energy and motion. But let's say you have an emotion. And I'm highly analytical, right? You all know this about me. But there's a process for processing emotions. And the first step is not analysis. The first step is expression because mm. it's energy. Mm-hmm. And if you go straight into your head, you push it down. Mm-hmm. Um, JJ, thank you for breaking that down. Listen, this was me. I was that. I was the one that was like, well, I have to analyze this and figure this out. No. The first step is feeling it. Yes. Crying. Yes. Is the first step. Yes, or punching or screaming. Throwing or... a pillow. But that's not okay. We taught that as right, kids. Right. That's not okay. You be like as a little girl, right. I was taught I could cry, but I was not allowed to be angry. And my brother was taught you can be angry, but you're well, it, by society. I'm not yeah. saying my family right. specifically. Right. But I remember like g- growing up and becoming a young woman, I had a real problem owning my own anger. I would go to tears because it was uncomfortable and I didn't know how to even just be in it. Yeah. It took a long time just to be able to be fucking angry. And then I realized, <laughs> oh, that's a higher that's higher on the energetic scale than depression, where I hovered. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is actually better. It's really uncomfortable, but it's better than being depressed. But it's releasing. It is release. It's it's feeling it. It's allowing it to be there. What you resist persists. So if you push it down, it's gonna stay there and then you'll be depressed. And develop cancer <laughs> and <laughs> and digestive issues and migraine headaches and uh, addictive behaviors that will continue to push down. We are always expanding let's go to the let's jump to the spiritual part we are always growing and expanding and if you have an emotion coming up that isn't letting out it's letting up it's because there's some else there's new place you need to go to yeah and and so all of the addictive behaviors of the cell phones and the control and the you know overworking and the workaholics and the food addiction and the need to look perfect and the need to be perfect and the need to people please and the need to put out fires and the need to you know there's so many of that that it's all deflection it's all numbing and it's, you know, feelings buried alive never die. So if they're not expressed, they will manifest into something else. And you will start to, you know, I, I dated a guy in after high school, after college, when I moved to New York. And it was when Dr. Sheree Carter Scott's books first came out. And it was, if life is a game, these are the rules. And then mm-hmm. if love is a game, these are the rules, which I lived by. <laughs> and I did my first list. And I'll never for- forget you know, I did my first list of what I thought I wanted in a relationship and I put exactly what I thought I wanted and I manifested exactly what I thought I wanted. And then You're I got a good it. Manifester. I got it and I went, Oh, I don't want this. <laughs> he was he also was gay. Um but uh <laughs> which I which honestly he never and who knows where he is now if he's actually admitted to that. But you know, the whole time he'd been in therapy for seven years, he'd like he was like mean. Like he'd say mean things and I could not understand. I'm like, do you even like me? Like I didn't pick up cues that he was interested. Like there wasn't that thing there, right? But yet he was saying things and I'm like, okay, and he was engaged to a woman and and, and at some point in time and like the brick hit me from the sky. And I'm like, oh my God, he's gay. And I said that to him, which of course that's never the right thing to do and confront somebody because then of course that triggered him into anger. Like, how dare you? Blah, 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 blah. Mm. But it was totally freaking true. But he was burying alive who he was, Mm -hmm. which led him to be mean at every turn. He was judgmental of every person as well as himself. That was easier for him than admitting that he might be. Absolutely. I've got another friend who had back pain, debilitating back pain because he couldn't, he hadn't told his parents he was gay yet. And it's not just about, you know, your sexuality. It's about, you know, um, one of the healers that I'm working with who I love and adore. She is amazing. And and Lisa, I just interviewed her for the show and she'll be on later this year. Uh, she had depression most of her life. And it's because she was clairvoyant from the time she was born, but never used her gifts until yeah. she was in her 40s or 50s. Well, I think that it's so important, and I'm discovering this in my um, 30s as well, is to be exactly who you are and not to hold back. And I've definitely been guilty of holding back parts of myself, and that's suffering. So why would I live in the suffering? And that's part of the reason that Susie and I started this podcast. I was holding back, and the people that I wanted to talk to weren't ready to listen. And so by starting the podcast, I was able to talk to people that wanted to listen and be myself and give an outlet to my passion that was burning me up inside. When I'm working for these clients, and look, we were doing good work. I'm not saying that. I wasn't doing good work. I was a filmmaker. I was working with clients that were doing good things for human rights and and social justice, and it was good. 
but I still had this passion of holistic health and helping people heal their body from the inside out. And it was literally eating me alive to the point where I felt so unfulfilled and so angry that I wasn't talking about it and the people I was talking to weren't listening. So the podcast for me has been a super outlet for that because it allows me to be myself, let my passion out to those who want to listen and those that don't, it's okay. But at least I'm getting that out of me and so that I can live a happier, healthier life because I'm being truly who I am and I believe who I was truly meant to be on the planet. That's exactly why I started my show. Yeah. And and, and you started yours like how long ago? Probably around um, 2014, September 2014 was when I launched. I, I had heard about podcasting in March of 2014. It gave myself six months to put it together, build the website, blah, blah, blah. And I did two seasons of the Fit to Love podcast. But then I don't know if you guys know, I've branched out and every single day of the week is now its own new channel. I heard that on your podcast and, and I was like, wow. <laughs> but here's the fun thing. So I started the show for the exact same reason. So how this ties into addiction and emotion is you're getting your cues. You're getting your you're getting pulled. You're getting tugged in a direction to express yourself. And it's if whether or not you're listening or not. And if you're listening and acting on it and you and you are expressed, then that need gets met and then you will have relief. If you're being pulled and tugged and you're denying it, then you're repressing, which is where depression comes in. Depression is not as much chemical as people think it is. It's a lot of repression, what depression is. Yeah. It's feeling powerless. It's feeling like I can't be who I am. I've always heard it's anger turned inward, and that always resonated for me. Yeah. Well, angry that I can't be who I am. Angry that yeah. I can't say what I want because I don't think anyone's going to listen or they're not going to like it or I've been told they don't well, want to hear of it. Like, instead of putting it out into the world, just turning it on yourself. So if you're having a pull, I mean, that's for you, it was a podcast. For me, it was a podcast. And quite honestly... So out of my six days a week and all the new six shows. I know. You're on fire. Oh, my God. The, the, the one day of the week. Well, what became about a branding issue. It wasn't the content. I, I still I still listen to my shows. Like, I've listened to one of my shows, like, four, four times. So, I, and, and trust me, I'm I'm highly critical. So, if it, like, if I didn't think it was good, it doesn't go out. I continue. Every time I post something or republish something, I look at it before I do it to make sure I still feel good about it. Because if I don't, I'm not putting it out. Susie, do you think JJ is more type A than me? Yes. <laughs> That's hard to do, Food Heals Nation. Well. That's why we connect. That's why we love sign? you. Pisces. But I have Sag Moon, Sag Rising, and Sag Soul. And I'm all Sag. You don't know what you are. No, we have your not moon done and your Rising are different. Yeah, your Moon and Rising are probably, you probably have some water, actually, is my guess. Fine. I don't know what that means, but I'm a fiery <laughs> sign. That's all I know. You are fire, yes. You're very fiery. Um so I, what, what's, here's what's awesome about like following the impulse, right? We talked about law of attraction in one of the last shows we did about fit to love, which yeah. is a big motivator for me. And it's kind of weaved into this a little bit. Um, but on the addiction conversation, on the emotional conversation, on the just being in your body, when you're in your body and you are getting the messages, both from your body as well as from your brain about like how to do something or that I'm not feeling fulfilled or that I'm like, you have to pay attention, first of all. And you can't think it's outside of you. Nothing is outside of you. And nothing is about the other person. It's always about you. <laughs> That's big. Yeah. That's big. Because I know people compare themselves to others and think I need to be here at this point or at this age. And that's pretty big. And it, and it, but it disrespects you. The reason why it feels bad is because it disrespects yeah. your journey, your unique journey and emanation in this lifetime on the planet. Right. And anytime you compare yourself to someone else, and yes, we all do it to a certain degree, but that also becomes addictive to want to make, like to beat yourself up. Tell yourself you're not good enough. Somebody somewhere has to hold the candle at the end to say you are good enough. And so like <laughs> making it you really just feels a lot better than trying to get it from or make it from source or God or whatever you believe in. Like make it make it your dog. I don't care. Make it something. But make it your dog. That's the best <laughs> advice I've ever heard. I fucking love it. Thank you, JJ. You know, if you can't look in the mirror and be like, I'm the best human I know. <laughs> my dog thinks I'm the best human I know. And yes, that's, there's right? a that quote is true. about that. It's like be the person that your dog thinks you are. Yes, they exactly. think you're the greatest. Right. And then take that and believe them and yeah. go with that. But so when I when I decided that Fit to Love wasn't reaching enough people in its current branding, because as you guys know, each day of the week is very specific. Yeah. I mean, it was get some smart exercise. I don't do exercise like other people do. I have a new client. She said eight trainers. Everything I've done with her is brand freaking new. <laughs> After 15 years and eight trainers, literally, I cannot package nor tell you what I do that's different. I mean, I can tell you, but you're not going to know until you do it. So that was very specific, the joint thing. And then the cooking was very specific kinds of food, paleo, gluten-free, dairy-free, right? Nutrition and alternative medicine was well, like it was also so specific that it wasn't speaking. I mean, it was, it's speaking, I have my tribe with, with Fit to Love, but it was a harder thing to attract because they don't, you don't know what's on each day of the week. So now each show has its own new brand. Mm -hmm. 
And the one day of the week, I mean, I literally did the podcast thinking, oh, I'm going to stick in this extra day just for me. I don't care if anybody listens. I'm doing this just for me. Can you guess what day of the week that was? It's my Freedom Friday show, which was the spirituality show. Oh, okay. And you know which podcast is doing the best right now? Friday. Yeah, it's yeah. now its new brand is Spirit, Purpose, and Energy. Spirit, Purpose, and Energy, I get emails every week wow. from people saying, thank you so much. The show is changing my life. They're gone. My, it's amazing. It's like the tribe has just emerged and the, I've you know, Astrology and Weight Loss was the first new show I had recorded mm-hmm. and I put it on that channel, but I also then put it on Fit to Love because I was like, well, let's put it there too. Because, But I did it for those people because they're hungry for this yeah. and they want what I'm wanting to talk about. But I wouldn't have known that. I wouldn't have found that because I wouldn't have given myself permission. I'm not an expert in law of attraction. I mean, I wouldn't have said I'm. You are to me. Well, well, (laughs) I have studied it, but I would never have said I'm an expert in law of attraction or spirituality or what. Like, okay, but obviously it's what people want from me and it's what I want to be talking about. Yeah, and you're good at it. So you manifested your husband. (laughs) And (laughs) we're manifesting all kinds of things all the time. It's all, oh, wait, I'll tell you later what I manifested. But, But the point is, is that you know if you're not on manifested some peaches yeah you guys manifested some food that i got you that i, <laughs> I know. that i that i made you today well i've been waiting to made. ask you because we just gotten onto so many good topics but um do you want to tell us quickly what you brought us and then we'll go back into manifestation yeah so well you manifested this yes thank you not that you asked for it uh <laughs> verbally or even consciously but when you know i saw people feeding you on the show i was like what we do you love mean? it I'm like, what? I can bring you food? Yes, well, of I'm going to bring you food. I have a cooking show. <laughs> so <laughs> let me bring you some of the food that I know you both will eat. So, this is the macadamia nut cream, mm. and it's raw macadamia nuts with Yummy. juice of an orange. And, oh, you got to give Allison her plate. I'm not worried um, about you. <laughs> juice of an orange and dates. And there's a little bit of water too because I didn't use enough um, orange juice. Okay, so that's. Um, paleo and vegan oh my gosh and it's not keto but it's paleo gluten-free dairy-free and vegan okay and i brought organic peaches and strawberries to go with that peaches are my favorite they go best Mm -hmm. um but anyway they're both good and then i dip the strawberries and the peaches into yes yep oh well i eat with a spoon too so i mean i'm just (laughs) i mean it is a great dessert um oh my god Is is there tahini in this no Macadamia, mm. macadamia is juice of an orange, rich dates, wow, and a little bit of water. That's it. It's so good, and it's so rich. I, yeah, I love it. It's, it's so, very satisfying. And then these are starting to melt, so you guys definitely should want to get in here, and I can bring out the ice pack again. So this is my dark chocolate bark. Both of them. And this was the oh first one I made, and I'm gonna warn you, that one is a little tiny bit sweeter than this one because I used more stevia. This is a dark chocolate that literally has zero, like it has like maybe a gram of sugar if no it like literally has no sugar mm-hmm. okay it's sugar alcohol and why that's good this is actually like keto chocolate is because it doesn't spike your blood sugar um and it's super dark so it's high in antioxidants and um and this one has goji berry and pepitas and sliced almonds and a little bit of sea salt that was the first one and the one i made today which is the one you guys are digging into right now that one is the same chocolate with mm. shredded organic unsweetened coconut mm-hmm. dried wild blueberries Mm. and sliced almonds Mm -hmm. and a little bit of vanilla stevia that is so good but it's so rich that you only need a little bit of it Mm -hmm. and it's very satisfying Mm -hmm. so it's low sugar it's low carb um it is also vegan and gluten-free and dairy-free and paleo and it's keto so it it gets them all (laughs) keto paleo gluten-free dairy-free vegan vegetarian (laughs) it's rare to get them all so where can we find the recipes well, this one isn't on yet, the dark chocolate, but you can follow me on Instagram, and I mean, it's pretty easy to do, um, but I'm happy to shoot, shoot a video. But the Macadamia Nut Cream is on both uh, the Fit to Love podcast as well as the new channel, which is Easy Paleo Gluten and Dairy-Free Cooking. Nice. Okay, perfect. And all of it's on jjflazanes.tv, which is my YouTube channel. Mm, this is so good, JJ. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Put the macadamia on the chocolate. Oh, I did. Don't worry. And here's some cinnamon. Oh, I, did. I brought cinnamon too if you want some cinnamon with those sure. peaches. I'll yeah. try anything. Cinnamon's great for everything. Blood this sugar is... regulation. Not that there's anything here that's going to spike your blood sugar, really. I mean, maybe the strawberries and the peaches, but it's not that high in sugar. It's not like I'm giving you pineapple and papaya, so um, berries are a little lower. So, you know, one thing we haven't talked a lot about on the podcast is keto. Can you tell us a little bit about like what that means and how it works? So the, the ketogenic diet is really, and I'm not an expert in it. I'm I'm just dabbling in it myself these That's days. Okay. But it, it came it came out because with cancer patients, they were looking at different diets, and they were sort of at their last limb, and they really like took out all the carbohydrates, mm-hmm. and the tumor shrunk because they weren't being fed 
And so keto is high fat. Keto is very high fat. I think your carb is supposed to be 10% and your protein is supposed to be around 20% and they're at 70% fat. It would fat. be like Atkins, wouldn't, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, but it's also not a green light to eat bad fat either. I mean, really, like right. a lot, a lot it's of a it clean, is. clean. It's much more clean. Right. So, for instance, like a lot of what I've been eating are eggs, avocado. I've made a lot of pestos. Mm-hmm. I've made a cilantro pesto. I've made a basil pesto, all dairy-free. Um, I've made one with a cilantro jalapeno pesto. So a lot of nuts. This macadamia nut cream would be fine. Any vegan cheese made of nuts, like mm-hmm. tree line. So and- scientifically, this puts your body in ketoacidosis, which means it's not getting simple sugars or carbohydrates. So it goes and breaks down your fat to, to get the energy, right? Yeah, and it uses what protein and the fat and for protein. energy. Yeah, I understand that for cancer patients, that makes sense. I always thought as a weight loss tool, maybe as a short-term thing it would be good. But I thought like people that are doing long-term keto, it's like, I don't think that would be good for your body. What do you think about that? Well, because I learned about it through the registered dietitian and physician that I work with, and they were doing it, and you know, she's got her daughter-in-law doing it, and I see all kinds of different people doing it. I actually, while maybe 70% fat is harder to achieve, mm-hmm. I still think the low sugar is yeah, a really- that's a lot of fat. But it's avocado. I mean, it's healthy fat. Right. right. It's, not, it's not saturated. I mean, it's right. a saturated fat. It's coconut, but it's not processed fat. It's mm-hmm. not trans fat. It's not- unstable fats right? right so we did a show called the uh, what oil should i be using and we went over all the different oils and the different like how you know why you shouldn't be having vegetable oil or soybean oil or canola oil why those are horrible for you and because of how they're they're oxidated already before they even I mean, forget heating them they're already bad before even i mean using them on a salad so they're gonna oxidize your cells and break you and break that down so it's not like it's actually helping you so in terms of the keto, do I think it's healthy long term? We'll see. But I think it's a healthier option, quite frankly, than uh, I mean, I've been doing it partially for about a month now. And yeah. I can tell you, I've, I feel fuller longer. Mm. I need less food. I don't have any cravings for anything. You know, I'll get back to you on whether I think it works long term. Get but, back to you know, me. Let me know. Yeah. No, it is interesting. And I've heard, um, you know, I've heard conflicting information. And so I just like to hear from other people who are doing it and see what they think. Um, But I want to get back to your book. Chapter 12 is about embracing and processing feelings. And it opens with this beautiful quote that I love from Nicholas Sparks, if you know who he is. Um, He was someone that I always like read all his books and watch his movies when I was younger and actually worked on a couple of his movies in North Carolina. But the quote is, the emotion that can break your heart is sometimes the very one that heals it. So we talked a little bit about this earlier, but I really want to delve into what that means. It's like, didn't you say earlier, like, you have to feel it to heal it or something along those lines? Someone did. Yeah. yeah. So I thought someone said it today. If not, maybe it was on another podcast as you and I were recording. But I feel like I heard that today. So what does that really mean to you? It means that just like the emotion conversation, we're having emotions all day long. We're having thoughts and feelings and an analysis of things. And, and it's only out of balance when something's big enough that it doesn't let up or that it causes like a a reaction in you that causes you to then do one of these behaviors that causes you to stuff it. And that's where addiction is born is when we don't want to feel it. And this is where like going back and linking the ADD conversation, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a lot of people who and kids that have been diagnosed as ADD and half of them are air signs. Well, air signs are about thoughts and ideas. Most air sign people, as you know, as an Aquarius are about like thinking and thoughts and big picture and idea like concepts. And that's where they live. That's mm-hmm. what feels natural and feels right. So are you going to, so if someone who has a really fast processing brain, does that mean that they have ADD because they can't focus? It's, it, they can learn, but they're going to need different tools to get in their body that someone else who's a Taurus or someone else who's a water sign who is gushing and, and you know, overwhelmed with their emotions. So it's not so easy as that every single person interprets. That's, that's why I started learning about astrology, because everyone is very different in how we see the world, how we interpret things, how we feel or don't feel, how we process feelings. And I think it's so key to understanding how you yourself, I'll give you an example. For me, my of all the planets, my Venus, how you deal with love, was in Aries. For those of you that have no idea about astrology, Aries is the first of the signs, often referred to as the infant of the signs. And Aries is very sort of top level, not very developed. They're pioneers, they're usually leaders, they're sometimes arrogant, but but they're very short tempered and they only have sort of like the let, like yes, no, right, wrong. Like Aries don't handle the third choice very well. There's no gray. It's either this or it's this. And if I don't, and, and, I, and I get very confused if there's like not a very clear this or this, okay? Mm-hmm. So when I was dating a guy years ago, uh, we'd broken up and then we kind of got back together. 
And all the rest of my signs and all the other planets are Sag and Pisces and Aquarius. Like I'm so about gray and it depends on the situation and I'm not about putting things in a box or being, okay, but for some reason I was hell bent on getting him to say, are we together or are we not together? What is it? I had no patience. And I, <laughs> and I thought to myself, why are you being like this? Why can't you just like be, enjoy the moment, be in the moment? Right. And I looked at my chart and I saw that my Venus was in Aries. I'm like, oh, all right. That's why, because that's how I process this feeling. That's why I process these emotions is I'm impatient and I need an answer to function. I feel very constrained by not knowing which lane I'm supposed to be in. Mm -hmm. So when, so it gives you a validation that you're not crazy and that you're not impatient or not trusting. It just gives you information about how you as a person right now process information and feelings. So, so this whole chapter is, is dedicated to embracing and processing feelings and identifying the addiction that doesn't let you feel. And then, like I said at the beginning about the anatomy of emotion, so there's the, there's, well, what about emotion? Well, emotions have different feelings in your body and we don't all feel them in the same places. Sometimes people feel, you know, although a lot of people feel it in their digestive area, a lot of people have digestive stress, a pit in your stomach or butterflies in your stomach. And there's also tightness in your chest, tightness in your back, tightness in your, your neck, your shoulders. Like people hold emotion in, in different places, but even recognizing that what's happening is stress related or emotion related that awareness being in your body and then there's the well what's going on so here's what i love i had a client today and he um he has been given tools that are about feelings and i think it's great that people are educating especially men to have a, to have a better vocabulary about the feelings here's the deal you only i'm going to say this very slowly and very poignantly <laughs> you only feel negative emotion when you have a need that is not being met when your needs are being met, you feel happy. There's no need to like analyze that. You're happy. You're in a good place. Now, so of the, Dr. Marshall Rosenberg wrote Nonviolent Communication. I love that book. That's, I love that was in your book. I'm, I'm still in it because I had to go back. I, I put it down halfway through. I was processing it. I was like, I got to go back and I got to go back because I, I got so much from it. And then I was like, I need to ingrain this into my head. I love that book. So that book is in this book. I know. Right. Because of, the, that. of this very reason. <laughs> Now, the, my, and I love nonviolent communication. Here's, I'll just disclaim. Here's my problem with it. When you go to a class, it like teach you to do it for others. Here's my problem. I took a whole group of people to a nonviolent communication workshop. And the, this is when I learned how I process information. So it's like a puzzle. So they presented it this one, two, three, four, five. And I watched everybody be very confused <laughs> because that's when something gets presented, if it doesn't make sense to me, I reorder it. So I had already reordered it two five one three four. <laughs> so to me, it made perfect sense. Of course, you had right. Well, but I didn't know that I did that until yeah. I watched everyone else learn it and everyone else be confused. And I realized it's because they want you to do it for someone else first. Mm -hmm. Well, here's my fit to love point of view: you can't do for someone else, you can't do for yourself. Well, well, my understanding was that like when That's you're a in a point. when you're in a conflict or confrontation that you're trying to get heard you're trying to get your point across you're trying to get your needs validated you're trying to get your communication through and the other person's doing the same thing so that if you put your sword and your shield down and try to tap into what their needs are what they're trying to communicate that you mirror it back that you, you put it back to them and say this is what i'm seeing so that they can kind of be soothed because you're taking the high road. That's the way I understood it. If you have the vocabulary and awareness, that's the issue. I worked with someone, a friend of mine, in the session. We we're talking about, like, she got angry because a guy was smoking at the gas station. And, okay, well, so she's like, oh, he was smoking at the gas station. And she was angry. And, and she, but she oh, could. because could have caused a disaster? Okay. I said, because your need for safety. But she was at a top level anger, and she didn't even, like, it took her a minute, and she went, oh, yeah, that is what it is about. Mm -hmm. But that's what I'm saying. It's. When you can't identify it within yourself, it's hard to identify sometimes in other people. And until we have an awareness, I think we're more empowered if we can, because I can stand here in a conflict with someone, just like you're talking about, and rather than feel defeated, because some people will resist putting their sword down and doing it for someone oh, else for first. Oh, sure. for sure. So, oh, yeah. So, so don't do that. Do it for your, do it as it's happening. Stop and say, what is it? What's my need? That I, what is it that I need? And then, then you go, well, what is it that you need? Oh, we have different needs. This is not about... And this is what I've talked about this ad nauseum on this show. This is what Sedona Method did for me. Enabled me to identify my needs. So they're the same kind of thing. Yeah. They're all on the, the... Emotions are on an energetic spectrum. You know, depression, despair is at the bottom and peace and acceptance is at the top and everything's in between. And that it's all... They have five needs. So it's control, approval, uh, security, safety, oneness, and separation. 
in the Sedona method. And that for me, it, it was, I was like, oh, that's really simplistic. I'm like, no, it's kind of true. And some, sometimes you have multiple needs within one issue. Well, that sounds a lot more simple, but I mean, that was, could be very good. Um, on my on the feelings and needs list in the book that I have that I mm-hmm. got from nonviolent communication, there's a hundred feeling words. First of all, a mm-hmm. hundred. That's a lot. Yeah, they have way more actually. And on the needs, there's eighty six. And and I'll give you an example. So because there's a three step process. So talking about processing emotions. So after step one of the whole emotional conversation is you need to feel your feelings. Yep. Until that charge is a little bit less before you start to analyze. Okay. So cry, punch, scream, whatever. Don't repress. When you go in a circle and you use food, you use alcohol, you use work, you use whatever to repress, you're not solving the problem. Remember, the only reason you feel a negative feeling is because a need is not being met and you're not going to get that need met by ignoring it. So feel your feelings so you don't stuff it down and then ask yourself how you feel and you can go through this process. I have a show about it on this podcast. I got it in the book. So step one is to figure out what your feelings are, okay? That awareness may help people feel better automatically, but it still doesn't solve the problem. After you feel, and I'll give you my own personal example, the second step is to identify what need is not being met. The third step, and most important, is that to create strategies, multiple strategies to get your need met that does not require anyone else Mm -hmm. to be different. That makes sense. The problem that we have with talking about feelings, because I've dealt with this with my family is that they have said you know i feel this because you right and they give the power to me for their feelings and that's not the truth yeah right they're different needs you have feelings but i didn't create those feelings and i didn't put them there right what happened triggered the feelings you already had inside of you so i was doing running like a mastermind and i had a a, a couple people these two, two people who were in the group and they they had never been in a group before and we had been about a year and it was sort of a multiple, it was a law of attraction group and we were doing different things and you know, every, every scenario like life and business and, and relationships and everything. And we got to the point where I wanted to take it to the next level and start doing some, some half day session whiteboarding for a business strategy. And, and I have done this with, with masterminds and mentors in the past. And so I was leading the group and by the way, the group was free. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> let's just put that out there. So I had said, well, let's do, they had said, you know, well, we, well, we want to do more with the business. I was like, okay, great. Let's do that. But they had assessed that everybody in the group wasn't in a place where they thought they were like the right people to help them with their business. And what I wanted to stress upon them was sometimes you don't even need the people in the room. You just need the space process it out loud for you yeah, to get your own ideas. Totally. There is value. And it doesn't matter if the people in the room, everyone has you never know where it can come from, right? That mastermind energy is like people coming together and something new being born. Doesn't so anyway, and it was free. So <laughs> so I'm like, well let's do a whiteboard session. And and basically, you know, one of them was like, Yeah, okay. And then I got an email maybe a couple hours later that said, No, we've changed our mind and quote, doesn't seem like a good use of our time. Hmm. And I felt like a punch in my gut. And I was like, okay, what's this about? Yeah. And my husband was like, oh, they're just, and he was like going off about them. I'm like, it's not about them. It's <laughs> not about them. It's not about them. Well, but it's not about them. I'm like, so I took the, sh- I literally like, cause I wasn't crying or tr- super triggered. I was feeling rejected. Now rejected is not a feeling. Rejected is a interpretation. So I was like, okay, what am I feeling? I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling annoyed. I'm feeling frustrated. I'm feeling miffed. Anyway, I went through the list of feelings. Here was the kicker. I was like, what's my need? What need is not being met that I'm having these feelings? Yeah. And it took, and it literally, the needs list enlightened me to no end. The need was for contribution. I had no idea I had a need for contribution that was so strong. I don't think the podcast was out at that time either. And if mm-hmm. it, I don't, so this was before the podcast. I had a need for contribution. And once I figured that out, I went, oh my God, well, that's an easy fix. What's a strategy? Give it to someone who wants it. Find someone else who wants it. Why am I trying to sell it to somebody for free who doesn't want it? Yes, that makes so much sense. And all of a sudden, I went from feeling rejected and punched in the gut and sad and agitated and all those things to feeling like I wanted to start a nonprofit. I was like, <laughs> I was up here, like, oh my God, like it was like so awesome. It's empowering when you realize what you need and how you can fix it. Right, how I can fix it. Yeah. I don't need you. Yeah. And, and, if, and I saw to some, and I have all this to offer. You don't want it? I'll go find someone who does. I'm sure there's somebody who does. Why am I beating a door for someone who's not going to answer it? Like, it just, anyway, it was, but it was very empowering. So the point is that, so again, in using this process, I think, is a step in, oh my God, healing relationships, being able to hold the space for somebody who is in victim mode, um, and really just feeling empowered in every area of your life. Just asking, you're figuring out, what is it that I need? Why does this keep happening? Why do I keep turning to food? Why do I, why can't I face this? What am I running from? What do I need? 
And maybe you're not going to get it right away. But if you're not asking yourself that question, no, nothing you do on the outside is going to fix it. You're just numbing it or avoiding it. And eventually it's going to catch up with you and it's going to be bigger. And it's going to be something that it's going to blow up into something that it didn't need to because you've been rejecting it for so long. Absolutely. Yeah. JJ, where can everyone find you online and buy your book and all that good stuff? Well, invisiblefitness.com is probably the best place to go because it reaches out to every other place uh, or jjflazanes.com, but fit, invisiblefitness.com and jjflazanes.com. And if they want a personal train with you, same thing? Yes. If you want a personal train with me, you can send me a message. I will direct you then to link or have a conversation with you. But again, I offer if you're local in Los Angeles, uh, I do have some in-person slots open right now, although I do start a publicity campaign next month, and I don't know how long that's going to last, but then I do Skype. So, And then I have some live events coming up in January. Fabulous. Well, we're so excited for your event. Thank you so much for being here. We Thank really you, JJ. appreciate it. Thank you, ladies. All right. I hope you enjoyed our interview with JJ. So that was the first in a series of interviews we're doing on tips and tricks from her book, The Invisible Fitness Formula, Five Secrets to Release Weight and End Body Shame. And if you want to delve deeper into these topics, you can check out JJ's Invisible Fitness Academy at foodhealsnation.com slash JJ. So if you struggled with your body, you're unable to shed those pounds for good, JJ wants to help. In her five-month transformational program, you will learn all about the holistic approach to healing your relationship with yourself by balancing science and emotions, and you'll begin to transform your body as a result. Each week, you will get a new lesson where you will learn how to release the weight and experience true happiness and deep fulfillment without starving or depriving yourself or working out seven days a week. Plus bonuses. He's singing, ladies and gentlemen. You know it's good. Sing it again. Bonuses. <laughs> if you sign up by September 30th, we'll also give you five months access to the Food Heals VIP Club. So you'll be getting these inspirational bonus podcast episodes from us while you're transforming your body, your health, and your life with JJ. Never before heard episodes like... How to banish negative thoughts and create a life of abundance with Alita McDaniel. Six tips to feel radiant with Tess Chalice. How to do a juice cleanse with Avita Rampart. How to make a four-course vegan meal with the Vince Leah. <laughs> the Vince Leah. <laughs> the healing power of essential oils to restore the mind, body, and spirit with our very own. The one, the only, Susie Hardy. That's me. And there's so many more. So each month during the five-month program, you will be receiving four video lessons a month from JJ on how to up-level your health and wellness and finally lose weight and end body shame. And you will be getting three brand new inspirational podcast episodes a month from us. So in those five months, you can completely change your body and your life so easy. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> it's not easy, but you'll have the tools that you need to do what you want to do and to reach those goals. So it's a great deal, Food Heals Nation. You'll also get coaching calls with JJ. You can find out all the details on how to join the program, plus additional bonuses we didn't even get to, we didn't have time for, because we talk a lot and we want to let you go. But you can find it all at foodhealsnation.com slash JJ. See you next time, Food Heals Nation. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben and Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your